This problem sounds really really simple, right? You are given an array of integers where all of them are unique, except one integer that will be duplicated. You just need to return that. Sounds very simple, right? But I have often found out that this question is asked in a lot of interviews. That is because with this question, we are not judging can you even solve the question. The interviewer will try to gauge your mental flexibility. Like how many solutions can you come up with? Can you do it in a single pass? Can you do it without giving any extra space? So in this video today, we will try to explore some of these options. Let me know how you feel about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. Today, we would be solving the problem, find the duplicate number on lead code. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will try to come up with a brute force solution to the problem and see some of its limitations. Going forward, we will explore some ways and ultimately try to achieve a very efficient solution. After all of this, we will also do a dry run of the code so that all of this sticks in your mind forever. This way you will never forget it. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let us just try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. What you are given here is, you are given an array of positive integers that has at most one element multiple times. It means that all of the elements will be unique, but there will be only one element that could be duplicated in multiple number of times. You need to find out that number. So let us look at some test cases. Let us look at our test case number one. You are given this array and you can see that the number two is repeated two times, correct? All the other three digits are unique. They are not repeated, right? So in our first test case, two should be your answer. Similarly, let us look at our test case number two. This time you have a pretty short array, right? But even in this one, you can see that the digit 1 is repeated two times, whereas the digit 2 is just unique, right? So in this case, 1 would be your answer. Now, the most important part of this problem is that the repeated number can occur multiple number of times. In our first two test cases, the digit 2 appeared two times and the digit 1 appeared two times, right? But it can also be possible that this number appears multiple number of times. What do you mean? Look at the test case number 3. You can see that the digit 3 appears 3 times, right? So, in this case also, all the other elements are unique, correct? So, your answer would be 3 in this case. Yep, that's it. That's all you get for the problem definition. So, if this problem statement is now clear to you, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us look at some solutions I can offer you. First of all, let us try to come up with a brute force solution. That is because it can guarantee you if a solution to the problem exists. So when it comes to a brute force solution, you need to find the duplicate number, right? What is the first thing that comes to your mind? What you can do is you can start with the first number and check if it is repeated throughout the array, right? You cannot find one anywhere else. That means the digit 1 is not repeated. Similarly, what you can do is you can start with the second digit and you can check if you can find this 7 anywhere else in the array. You cannot find it, right? And hence, 7 is also unique. Next, you start with the number 3 and you will again try to search it in the array. You don't see 3 over here, but as soon as you move to the next position, you see a 3 again. What does that mean? It means that the number 3 is duplicated. So what you need to do is you need to just return this 3 as your answer. Now this is the correct solution and it will give you a correct answer every time. But do you see the problem with this approach? What you are doing over here is you are comparing every number to all the other numbers in the array again and again. First you will start with the first digit, then you will start with the second digit, then you will start with the third digit and so on. Think about a case, what will happen when your array is too large? What will you do? You will keep on comparing all of the elements, right? 
and this will take a lot of time. So this method is not desirable. So if you come up with this solution, your interviewer will ask you, hey, can you optimize this solution? So what can you do now? Let us take up our sample array once again. Whenever you are doing problems around searching, always think about sorting. Because think like this, if things are aligned in a certain manner, you can easily go to a certain position, right? In this array, you need to search for the duplicated number, right? So given this test case, what I can do is I can sort this array. As soon as I sort it, this is the new array that I get. And what can you do now with the sorted array? You know that all the elements are aligned in certain fashion, right? They could be ascending or descending. This time they are in an ascending order, right? So if I start traversing from the beginning, I encounter one, then I encounter three, and then I will encounter a three again. Why? That is because when I sorted this original array, all the duplicate elements would combine at the same position, right? Because all the other elements are unique. So when you're traversing the array from the beginning, as soon as you find a duplicate element, that is your answer. Because that number was duplicated and hence they are together. So once again, you can say that three is your answer. And hey, you were able to save some time because you only iterated the array once, right? But at the same time, you were also sorting the array. And sorting will take a time complexity of order of n log n. That is the fastest sort that you can do, right? The quick sort. So in a way, you're still taking a lot of time. Your interviewer will again ask you, hey, you sorted the array and that took some time. Can you do something that can reduce the time even further? So what can you think about next? Okay, so let us now try to take up our sample array once again. You know that the brute force solution had a time complexity of n square. You brought that down to order of n log n by using sorting. You want to reduce it even further, right? And if you have to reduce it further, it means that you need a linear time complexity. That means you only want to traverse this array once. And when you're traversing the array once, you need to remember that, okay, I have encountered this element earlier as well, right? Then you can determine that, hey, this element is a duplicate, right? So this gets you thinking, right? That maybe if I store all of the elements somewhere else where I can look up really quick, then maybe I can solve the problem in just one scan. So what can you do about it? In a hash fit, you can store all the elements and you can look them up just in order of one time. So let us try to take a hash set and try to solve this problem. I have my hash set with me, right? And what I'm going to do is I will start traversing this array from the beginning. I see the element one, right? And I will check if it is present in my hash set. It's not, right? So what I will simply do is I will add one to my hash set. Going forward, I get the element seven. I will again look it up in my hash set. Since seven does not exist, I will add seven to my hash set. Moving on, I get the element three. Three also does not exist. So I can simply add three to my hash set. Going forward, I see the element four. This is also not in the hash set. I will just add it. Moving one step ahead, I get the element three again, right? And when I will try to look up this three in my hash set, I can find this three over here. What does that mean? It means that I have already encountered a three and this one could be a duplicate. And that's it. You need to just stop over here because there is only one element that could be duplicated. So at this point of time, you can safely say that three is your answer. So you must be happy now, right? That you had an initial time complexity of order of n square. You reduced it to order of n log n. And this time you even reduced it to order of n. But what just happened? As soon as you took this hash fit, you took an extra space of order of n because you're storing your element somewhere else, right? So this time your solution also takes up a order of n extra space. 
and wow, your interviewer just got one more opportunity. He will say that, hey, can you also reduce the space that you are taking up? What do you do now? Well, there is a very interesting solution that I have to offer to you. So let us try to look towards it. Okay, so let us take up a sample array once again. And once again, we will try to find the duplicate number. Oh, and by the way, to come up with this solution, we will be using the concepts from detecting a loop in a linked list. So if you're new to that, I would highly recommend you to check out my videos on that problem first. That is because we will be using the exact same concept to solve this problem. We will just be transforming this question into that one. And then it will become really simple. So if you're familiar with it, then let's proceed. What I would like to highlight over here is when you have an array, you don't just have the elements in it. You have two pieces of information, right? One is the number itself and the other piece is the index of all of these numbers. Let me just write down all of these indices and see what we can come up with. I have my indices ready, right? So now what I will do is I will start off with my first index that is zero. You can treat it as the head of the node, right? And at the head, I have the element two. So I will just write down this element number two over here. I need to determine what will be the next node, right? To find the next node, what do you do? Just look at this value and use this value as an index. This is the index two, right? And to determine the value, this will be your next value. And this will be the next node that you create. So what I do is from this position, I go on to position number two and I will find node number four, correct? So I do a next and create a node four over here. Move ahead now. You see this number four, right? So go to index four. I go to index four. And this is where I will find my next element. That is three. Now go to index number three. When I go to index three, I find my next element and that is one. Do this process similarly ahead. Go to index number one now. When I go to index one, I find the value six. So I create a value six over here. Now go to index number six. I see the value five. My next node is five. Once again, what I will do is I will go to index number five from over here. When I go to index number five, that is where things get interesting. I see the value one again. So what I will just simply do is I will point the next of this node to node number one. What do you see over here now? Our problem transformed into another problem. And this is a linked list which has a loop in it. To determine the duplicate number, all you need to do is you need to find the starting point of the loop. And when you do that, you will be able to find out the duplicate number in the array. As you can see in this array, number one has been duplicated, right? So what you can simply say is the starting point of this loop will be your answer. The cool part about this solution is that you only do one traversal of the array, so your time complexity remains order of n, and you do not take any extra space to implement this solution. So your space complexity also remains order of one. And hence, this solution becomes really, really efficient. Let us now quickly do a dry run of this solution to see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample array. Now, this array is passed in as an input parameter to the function find duplicate. If you try to look at this code and just make a quick glance at it, this is a very similar solution, right? You start a fast and a slow pointer until they meet. And as soon as they meet, move both the pointers at the same speed until they meet again. As soon as they meet, return the slow pointer. And that will return you the starting point of the loop, right? So how is it actually working? Let me show you one iteration. 
we have our starting pointer slow and fast and they both start at position number zero right so in a first step what do i do i do slow equals to nums at slow so what will happen is it will say slow equals to nums at slow and that is zero and this translates to the first element right so the value of slow will change to two correct in our next line we are moving the fast pointer at twice the speed how is that happening if you look at it we say fast equals to nums at nums fast this will translate to nums at two right because right now the value of fast is zero correct and this will eventually translate to nums at two so the nums at two value is four so this will be equal to four so what do you see over here the slow pointer is sitting over here and the fast pointer is sitting at number four what just happened is the fast pointer moved two places and the slow pointer only moved one place this will keep on happening in a loop until slow and fast eventually meet as soon as they meet you know what to do right you need to start the pointers from beginning again and advance both the pointers at the same speed when they will meet again you know that you have determined the starting point of the loop and that is where you return the answer i hope i was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you as per my final thoughts take a moment to realize how we converted one problem from one form to another so what i want to tell you is that the basic underlying concept when you're solving programming questions in general usually remains the same there are just a lot of words on top of it so what you need to generally do is you need to dig the problem try to visualize it and see what is happening you will be surprised how you can convert a complex problem to a very simple problem that you might have already solved then you know what to do you can easily solve it right what other methods can you come up with can you solve it using a binary search and can you solve it using a hash map tell me everything in the comment section below and i would love to discuss all of them with you you would be also glad to know that a text based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com a pretty handy website to help you out with your programming needs you can check the link in the description below as a reminder if you found this video helpful please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends this motivates me to make more and more such videos where i can simplify programming for you also let me know what problem do you want me to solve next or rather what do you want to know about next so until then see ya